hallelujah by and by. Welcome to church for this exciting service. We are so glad you chose to be with us today. We are anticipating what the Lord will do in our hearts today through the singing, the special music, and Bible preaching. On the way in, you should have received a service guide where you can find the sermon notes, today's program, and a list of upcoming events. If this is your first time visiting with us, head to manteca.church slash connect so we can send you a gift for being our first time guest. Thank you so much for being with us today at CBBC. Everyone, let's all stand together. Song number 243 in your hymnals, if you'd like to see the words. Song 243, Wonderful Words of Life, all together on the first. Sing them over again to me. Welcome to our midweek service on this Wednesday night. As you can tell, Pastor is not here. He is still at the Leadership Conference at Lancaster Baptist in Southern California. And so a couple of the staff came back today to be at the service. We had such a great time there. And uh, the reason why Pastor takes the staff to those things, the reason why he is there, of course we have a great time, but it's not just about a great time. Uh, we want to be sharpened to serve you better. And that's why pastor does that. And so he says, guys, and he gives assignments. You go to this one, you go to this one, you, uh, you, you learn about this, you learn about this. Why? And so we can learn how to better equip and serve the church of God. And so that's what he's down there doing. And uh, we had such a wonderful time. We missed our pastor, of course, when he's not here. We're looking forward to a great time of prayer. And if you're a visitor tonight, let me encourage you, please come back when he's here. You want to meet him and his family. You want to hear him preach. So please come back and you want to be able to hear our pastor. But glad you made it in on our midweek service. Gentlemen, if you have our prayer guides, could you get those out tonight while you're standing? If you didn't get one of those, could you please slip your hand up? I want to make sure we get that to you. Hold your hand up there if you would. Well, this morning, early this morning, uh, I went to get my wife a Starbucks and I looked across the parking lot and, uh, and, and I saw a, a donut shop called Spud Nuts. Anyone ever been to a Spud Nuts before? And, uh, and it stuck in my mind because when I had traveled from uh, Missouri to California some years ago driving a bus, I remember someone with us said, you, someone said, there's a Spud Nuts, you got to go to a Spud Nuts. And I guess what it used to be, I don't know how much it is now, what it used to be is instead of typical flour, uh, they'd make it out of potatoes instead of flour. And I thought, anytime I can get more potatoes in my diet, I'm doing it. And so I went over there. I couldn't tell the difference. But hey, it was a good donut nonetheless. And uh, but we're glad you're here on a Wednesday night. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll ask God to bless our service together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be in church. Lord, we love coming to church. How our hearts are encouraged from the moment we walk through the doors and we see the smiling faces of our brothers and sisters. 
And we hear our brother on the piano playing the hymns of the faith that encourage our heart. And God, we come before you and we get to meet with our Savior. We get to read your word and hear from heaven. We get to sing about you and sing to you. We get to pray for one another. God, we love being in church. I pray you bless this service tonight. I pray for the Master Club's program across the way. Would you bless them as they teach our young people what it means to be a Christian. I pray for those across this building, our Spanish ministry. Thank you for how you're blessing there and the great growth we're seeing. Bless Brother Gaona as he opens the Word of God with those dear Spanish-speaking people. God, would you use that tonight? I pray you be with us in here as we'll sing and God open the Word of God momentarily and then go and break across the property to pray and seek your face. I pray that we'd meet with you tonight. Thank you so much for your faithful people, servants of God who are here because you are a priority in their lives. Bless them for making the decision to come to church, we pray. Bless the service tonight, we ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. Song number 419 in your book if you want to use it. God will take care of you. Let's sing it together. God will take care of you. On the first together, be not dismayed. Water be tied. need he will provide how many of you can think of a time in your life where the Lord provided for you and he met a need so as we sing that third verse together I want you to think about the words think about the times that God took care of you when you couldn't care for yourself God was there for you all together on the third verse ready all you may need he will provide God will take care of you take care of you. I love singing that song. I like what he said. As you sing that verse, 
Uh, all that you need, he will supply. So many times in our lives, God has met the need for us. Oh, it's so easy for us to forget, isn't it? We forget. We were saying, Lord, I need you to come through, and he comes through. Oh, time and time again, what a good God we serve. I'm excited about this coming Sunday. It's the pumpkin bake-off, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you haven't forgotten about it. I certainly have. I'm thinking about some pumpkin pies. I'm thinking about pumpkin cheesecake. I'm thinking about pumpkin, all sorts of other stuff. And I talked to a gentleman today. Before service, I said, brother, I got a question for you. I said, brother, would you be willing uh, to be a judge for this competition? And with tears in his eyes, he said, brother, I've been waiting for you to ask me that. Yes, I want to be a judge. Yes. And uh, I'm so excited about this, Sunday. It's going to be great. Please make sure you grab the rules for this. Uh, that there, there are times that you have to bring in all of those things. And so to make sure that your entry uh, is properly registered, all those things, you need to make sure you take a look at this. So please get that in the lobby and uh, throw a dessert in there. Maybe you say, you know, I don't know, I probably won't win. Just throw it in there anyway, you never know. And at the very least, we'll get to enjoy it afterward. And so please do that. And maybe you don't want to enter the competition, but you want to bring something, please do that as well. We want to have more desserts than we need. We always want, we're a Baptist church, that's how it has to be. And so we have to have more than we can possibly eat. And so please be sure to bring that there tomorrow evening. We're gonna have a great time with that. How many, when you drove in, you saw a white bus in the back of the property. Anybody see that? If you parked up here, maybe you didn't see it, uh, but down there right next to the trash enclosure uh, is the yellow bus that we drove back from Illinois, and it's about all white now, and so it's getting that first white coat, and it'll get some red on there, and uh, it's going to be exciting. And so Brother Bellatindos, Brother J.B. Bellatindos, he took a week off of work and uh, to be able to paint that for our church. And so if you see Brother JB, would you thank him, please? Would you do that? And just say, thank you, brother, for your sacrifice. And, and he's been wanting to do it for a long time. Hasn't been able to work the schedule out. And, and so he said, brother, I got the time. He's working with Brother Kay Lee. And so I know others in the church have been up here to help him, especially some young people who've been up here. And they've been learning what it means to sand a bus. They've been having a lot of fun doing, doing this, trying to sand it and get it ready to go. I appreciate all that have come up to help prepare that bus and those that are helping him paint it. I'm excited. See that bus in shiny red and white rolling up and down these streets. And so uh, thank you so much, those who are helping with that event. At this time, we're going to go ahead and show a video. Brothers, if you can get that queued up in the back. And on the back of your prayer page, on our missionary, uh, on the right column, third down is Esteban Marquez. And he's our missionary to Mexico. I think he came here, I want to say, maybe three or four years ago him and his wife, and I don't remember if they had a child at the time or not. Now they have two. I hope you follow them on Facebook. Uh, but they have some exciting news. You're gonna, if you didn't see this video already, uh, you're going to love it. So stay, pay attention to what's going on. It's so exciting what God is doing. So let's queue up that video here, guys. Let's watch this video from Brother Marquez. Just want to give you a quick update as to our ministry and our family. Thank you so much for your prayers for our little one, little Andres. Uh, he is doing well, and uh, little Sebastian's doing well, my wife is doing well. So thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you for praying for uh, the new plans for the new church as well. I want to give you a quick view from the outside of a place that we recently found. We signed the contract, and we'll be working on it today. But uh, it's this second floor above this pharmacy here. That's where we'll be meeting for the church. And now I'd like to give you a uh, tour from the inside. This is the inside of the church. Let me show you what it looks like. Here at the entrance, we have a restroom. Um, we have an open space here where we'll be able to have services, put some chairs and a pulpit here. And uh, this reception area will actually be tearing down today. We're doing, we'll be doing a little bit of demo. A uh, man that I'm currently discipling has um, wanted to help. And so he's gonna be here in just a little bit, but we have some more of an open area as well here and we have some rooms that I'd like to show you that we'll use for Sunday school classrooms, we'll use for nursery, this will be like the welcome area, uh, kids class right here, there's going to be an office in this area, this little room right here, and let me show you the soon to be nursery area right here, this room, and then it has its own bathroom as well. This is the view going back. 
So I want to thank you so much. I know we've been asking for prayer that God would help us find a place. And uh, it was a bit challenging. It took a little bit, but thank thankfully we were able to find this place. And I want to continue to uh, ask for prayer. Um, I know in the next few weeks we'll be buying furniture for the nursery, for the children's class, uh, the pulpit, the chairs, and a lot of furnishings here for the church. If God would lay it on your heart to help us with any of those expenses, please let us know. Um, but either way, please pray for us that God would prepare the hearts of the people that uh, whose lives will be changed here. They'll be listening to the gospel here. and. Um, Thank you so much for, for the way that you have prayed for us. I'm also very excited to announce the name of the new church plant. And really after seeing people during COVID with no stability in their lives, with no hope, God has put in my heart to name the new church plant, the New Hope Baptist Church, Iglesia Bautista Nueva Esperanza. So please be in prayer that this will be a place where people experience the power of the gospel and find a new hope in Christ. Uh, we are excited to see what God will do in the next few years here in this building. And uh, please be in prayer for us. We'll keep you updated. Excited to see what God's going to do for His glory. Excited by that video right there. What a blessing. New Hope Baptist Church. That is going to be their new church plant. And they finally found a building. And pretty soon in that building will be many precious souls who will get the gospel preached for them. Many will be saved in that building. I'm so excited about that. So let, in a little bit, we'll pray for Brother Marquez and his brand new building as they launch out to plant a brand new Baptist church in that area of Mexico. So exciting. Aren't you glad when you give your missions, I'll just go into something like that. Man, just encourages me. And so if you're not currently giving the missions, maybe you don't understand how that works, let me encourage you, start today and get involved in these works all across the world and where they are planting churches just like this one. I'm telling you, where, where they use the word of God and they teach people that Jesus is the only way to heaven and they teach people that how to live the Christian life. And one day, those people over there who get saved, we won't meet them maybe, maybe in this life, but one day in the next life, we'll get to meet those people. And I look forward to that. So exciting. What a good missionary brother Mark is. You'll be in prayer for him. That God helps. As they, uh, that's just an exciting time. They're going to buy all the furniture, uh, all new furniture for their nursery. How many noticed how clean that building looked? I don't know if it's brand new or not, but man, that, that place is clean. That's so nice. And so well, God did a miracle for them. God gave them a perfect building for a church. I'm just imagining my mind when they have their grand opening service. Those people walk in and think, wow, this place is really nice. And they sit down and the Bible's open. Man, I wish I could be there. So exciting. And uh, you've been praying for Brother Marquez. And, of course, the birth of his little boy, the little baby you saw there. And uh, what a great missionary family. Usher, would you come uh, with our place at this time? And uh, Brother Brian, if you don't mind helping Brother uh, Easter. Oh, never mind, never mind. I'm sorry. Brother Kaleek was there. He was just take, finishing up his smoke, I think, or something. I don't know. No, just kidding, just kidding. And uh, just kidding. <laughs> Cut off it out, Brother. Get it out. And uh, make your way. We'll take our offering. And uh, God is so good to us, isn't he? Oh, let's try that again. I said, God is so good to us, isn't he? And uh, through the years, how God sustained our church so good. And uh, I do want to mention uh, a couple of prayer requests. We'll do that in a little bit after we take the offering. You get ready to look at those, and we'll pray together on those things. Brother Easter, if you wouldn't mind coming, opening tonight, our offering, and a word of prayer, please, my brother. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we do thank you for your goodness, for your grace, God. Lord, we thank you for how you've blessed each and every one of us, Lord. Continue to bless us, Lord, and for uh, blessing Central Valley Baptist Church, Lord. God, just help us to be a blessable church, Lord. Always, God. Be with those as they give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
all stand together for this, this last song, number 391, Sweet Hour of Prayer, song 391. On the first verse together, Sweet Hour of Prayer, Sweet Hour of Prayer, that calls me from a world of care, and bids me at my Father's throne, make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escape the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour. robe of flesh and rise to seize the everlasting prize. Great singing tonight, church. Take your Bibles, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. As you're turning there, I want to take a brief moment to mention some things in the prayer bulletin. 1 Thessalonians 5, a couple of things here to keep in prayer. Uh, would you pray for the, uh, of course, Brother Gary Lynch. There's a sign-up sheet in the lobby uh, for 24-hour prayer uh, for him. Guys, I'm going to switch to my lapel here, okay? Am I on? There we go. Good, good. Uh, you pray for Brother Lynch, of course, his surgery on October the 12th. Please sign up there and pray for him. Uh, it'd be great to have people praying around the clock uh, for that man. And his outlook and spirits are up, and he needs us to get behind him, lift him up in prayer. So please sign up for that if you would, and uh, continue to be in prayer for him throughout the week leading up, and of course the day in recovery as well. We pray for the Noltemeyer family there on the list here. And it just seems her family has had a lot of struggles recently. You, uh, those of you that get the text, it's one thing after another with grandpa and aunt and all this stuff. Would you pray, please, uh, for comfort and for God to work at her grandfather's funeral? That's this coming Monday. And then Philip Trigg, her cousin, is having stomach surgery or had stomach surgery, rather. And then uh, Brandy, her aunt, suffered a heart attack. So just be in prayer that God will help there and that maybe God could use Lindsay to be a witness to her family. 
your family gets saved, would you pray for that? Pray for Dan Dole. Uh, those of you that received the text messages know he went in for a heart ablation. So if I understand correctly, uh, they go in and they scar tissue in the heart uh, to prevent electrical signals going where they don't want them to go or something of that nature. Uh, but he came out of the procedure. Is that, is that, is that correct? Uh, came out of the procedure, uh, did not quite go exactly as they had hoped. He's still hospitalized as we speak. Is that correct? They're still, still working on him. And so uh, how many would say, I will pray for Dan Dole? Can I see your hand there? Good. Look at that, Mr. Jamie. Many praying for your dear husband, and we're lifting him up in prayer. You keep us updated if you would, please. We're praying for our dear brother, and God will help him there. Uh, last on this list here under the special request is Congressman Mike Garcia, and he's on our list tonight. We, we, we heard his story, a little bit of a story, at the conference earlier this week. He's a congressman for the District of Southern California, but the reason why he's on our list uh, is because he is a believer, he's a Christian who's fighting for truth in our government. And uh, anytime there's someone who wants to fight for truth and hold up uh, the moral line, we ought to be praying for him that God will help him. And uh, how many understand he has an uphill battle to face? Uh, not many people like uh, where he stands and what he's trying to advance and what he's trying to hold the line for in our freedoms and the freedom of religion, uh, most importantly, uh, that is being attacked, especially in our state. Uh, but he is doing, uh, uh, he says, God's called me to do this. And, and he, he, he served in the military. Uh, if I give his brief biography, he served in the military many years, uh, flew, uh, flew, I think, helicopters or planes over, over Iraq and all this stuff, just a decorated hero. Uh, and then after, he's, he said, I never thought that I'd be into politics, but I felt the Lord wanted me to do that. And so there he is trying to make a difference for Christ in that arena. And so he needs our prayer and support. So you pray for Congressman Mike Garcia. God will help him as he battles uh, spiritually over there and tries to help our state. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, we're going to look at a few verses tonight. And then we will break up and pray like we normally do. And I hope you're enjoying these extended prayer times. I certainly am. And uh, when you pray with another brother in Christ or another sister in Christ, hi, it just helps your spirit. And so I hope that you'll enjoy that. First Thessalonians chapter 5, let's look at verse number 16 all the way to verse number 22. The Bible says this. Let's read responsively. If you would read every other verse with me, I'll read the even-numbered verses. You can read the odd-numbered verses out loud with me. Verse 16, the Bible says this. Rejoice evermore. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Verse 19, quench not the Spirit. Despise not prophesying. 21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Thank you, you may be seated. In our text, we see the closing remarks of the Apostle Paul in his first letter to the church of Thessalonica. Towards the end of this letter, he fires off seven quick instructions to this church. And tonight I want us to consider the second one. We find it in verse number 17. Would you read it out loud with me one more time? Verse number 17. All together, here's what it says Pray without ceasing. I want us to consider that instruction. Paul reminds the Thessalonian believers how important prayer is in their Christian life. So important, in fact, that Paul says you should always be praying. Pray without ceasing. For the child of God, prayer should be constant in his life. It shouldn't happen only occasionally. It shouldn't happen only on Sundays or Wednesdays at church or only when a loved one is in the hospital. No, for the child of God, prayer should be constant in his life, like a seatbelt uh, that is unceasingly secure during a car ride. And uh, maybe those of you that have children, uh, you remember those times looking back and saying, why are you out of your seat? Buckle that thing back in. You know, the kids get adventurous. And, hey, what are you doing? We're driving. And that thing needs to be in there the entire time. And I say in the Christian life, prayer needs to be right there for us all the time that we're using it and taking advantage of that relationship that we have with God. John Gill in his commentary on this scripture said this, not that saints should be always on their knees or ever lifting up their hands and vocally calling upon God. This is not required of them and would clash with and break in upon other parts of religious worship and duties of civil life, which are to be attended to as well as this, and besides, would be impracticable. So obviously we cannot 24-7 you know, be, be on our knees all, you have to go to work. And uh, you need to come to church and things like that. He says this, but the meaning is that believers should be daily and often found in the performance of this duty. For as their wants daily return upon them, and they are called to fresh service and further trials and exercises, they have need of more grace, strength, 
and assistance. And how many can identify say, I could use some grace today. I could use some strength today. I could use some assistance today. He says, and therefore should daily pray for it. The reason for this rule of praying with frequency and constancy is because the saints are always needy. Now to realize we are a needy people. We need our God. They are always in want of mercies of one kind or another and therefore should continually go to the throne of grace and there ask for grace and mercy to help them in time of need. So tonight I want us to consider the instruction from the Apostle Paul to the Thessalonian church. Pray without ceasing. Tonight we're going to look at four reasons to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, help us as we look in your word tonight. Lord, I'm always encouraged by the word of God. It always has something that can be a help to my spirit. And I pray that tonight we would all be helped by the word of God. I pray you'd move me out of the way, God, and may people hear your spirit tonight. Use me, God, to be a channel of your truth. Speak to us through your word, we ask. May we be better because of it. In Jesus' name, amen. May I say, number one, uh, four reasons to pray without ceasing. Number one, we ought to pray without ceasing because God wants to hear us. God wants to hear us. I love, I love this verse in Jeremiah 33. You might know it. It says this, call unto me and I will what? Answer thee. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. How many of you have ever uh, uh, maybe taken out your phone uh, and said, hey Siri, call whatever business or hey Google, call whatever business. And you want to find out what time they close. Because you know when you look it up on Google or Yelp, sometimes the times are not always right. And you drive over. It's talking. It heard, hey, Google, it's talking. Now. And, uh, and, and you drive over there, and oh, it's closed. And so you call them, and you know they're open. You know they're open because it's only 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But the phone rings and rings and rings. In your mind, you're thinking, that teenager, he's looking at the phone. He's not picking it up. He doesn't, you know, and, and, and in your mind, what? But, but the, the, the phone rings, but they won't answer it. Or maybe they answer the phone, but they don't want to hear you. You know what I'm talking about? I remember years ago, I, I went to, uh, maybe some of you would remember Radio Shack. You remember Radio Shack? And uh, I went to Radio Shack, and, and I needed a, an adapter that plugged into my laptop, and, and it was like a Y adapter that allowed me to plug headphones and a microphone in. And so uh, I, I called them, and I said, hey, here's what I'm looking for. He says, no, no, I, I don't have that. I said, okay, okay. So I went on his website. And uh, see, I'm personal. His it's not his website, but you know, I went on the website and I looked up and I found the part that I needed. And I looked and it said, "Oh, is it in my Manteca store?" Yes, it is. We have you know seven thousand on it, whatever the number was. And so, so I called and I said, "Hey, I'm on your website. It says you have it. Um, here's the part number. Do you have this?" He says, "No, I don't have it." I said, "Do you want to look because your website says you have?" It. No, I don't have it. I said, "Okay, sir. Thank you." Hung up the phone. Got my keys, started my car, went over there, and uh, I, I walked in. I walked over to the section. Took me about two minutes. Found the part exactly. When I, I went up. I went up to the counter, and uh, and uh, I gave it to the guy. He goes, w "Were you the guy that called about this?" I said, "I was." He goes, "I guess we do sell it." I said, "Yes, you do. That's why I'm buying it." And uh, and I didn't say that, but uh, that's what I was thinking in my head. And uh, he he heard me, but he didn't want to listen to me. May I say, when you call on your God? He wants to listen to you. He wants to hear what you have to say. Oh, how that encourages me. Call unto me, he says, and I will answer thee. Or maybe you've called for support. And you get that famous, thank you for calling Xfinity. Please listen carefully as our menu options have recently changed. They've changed every day for the past like three years or so. I don't know. It seems like all the companies got together and said, hey, guys, let's change all of our menu options at the same time, okay? Every business you call, it says that. Uh, and, and then you hit, you hit zero. I'm sorry. That's not zero. I'm sorry. Zero. I'm sorry. Zero. Please hold while I get your representative. You finally, you finally get to somebody, and then they end up not being able to help you anyway. Uh, but may I remind you tonight uh, that we ought to pray without ceasing because our God wants to hear us because he can help us. He wants to hear us, and he wants to help us. Take your Bibles, Lamentations chapter number 3. I hope this scripture can be a help to you. Lamentations chapter number 3. Right after the book of Jeremiah, it's a short little book. Lamentations chapter number 3, and verse, verses 55 through 57. I want us to see this. This is so helpful. When you think about praying without ceasing, and, and how we can call on God and He'll answer us. I want you to consider these verses. Here's what it says, Lamentations 3.55, I called upon thy name, O Lord, 
out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thine ear at my breathing, at my cry. Here's what it says. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou saidst, fear not. Jeremiah says, Lord, I called on you. And when I called on you, you drew near to me. Aren't you glad that when you call on God, he doesn't say, nah, I can't help you right now. Maybe, maybe another time. I'm too busy. No, when you call on your God, he draws near to you to help you. Oh, how that helps me tonight. 1 John 5.14 says this, and this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Can you think about that just for a moment? That God hears you. I, I, I can't wrap my brain around that. That God hears my, my little pipsqueak voice on this planet earth. That God hears me. This is the confidence we have. We're not, we're not hoping. We're not just uh, like those that worship idols where they pray and they hope that their God will hear their request. No, no, no. We have confidence that he hears us. He heareth us amidst keeping the universe in order, causing the sun and moon and stars to shine. Amidst all of that, he heareth us. Amidst feeding the birds and noticing the tiny sparrow that falls, he heareth us. Amidst managing an innumerable host of angels and all that's going on in heaven, amidst all of that, he heareth us. Heareth us amidst supplying life and breath to every man and beast on earth. He heareth us. I'm glad tonight to tell you that your God hears you. Hebrews 4.16 says this, Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We should pray without ceasing because God wants to hear us. May I say number two? I must move quickly. We should pray without ceasing, number two, because we need to spend time with God. We need to spend time with God. Not only does he hear us, but we need to pray because we need to spend time with him. Turn to Mark chapter 3. Would you Mark 3 in your New Testament? Matthew and then Mark. Mark chapter number 3. I think about the disciples and the incredible things they did for Christ. I think about them healing people and casting out demons, preaching. I think about Peter as he walked on the water, as he caught that fish and opened it up, and there was, there was that coin in the fish's mouth. I think about all these interesting things that God allowed them to do and to see. In Mark chapter 3, in verses uh, 13, we see Jesus as he calls his disciples, and here's what it says, And he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. Mark 3, verse 14. And he ordained twelve, that they should be with them, and that he might send them forth to preach, and have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out the devils. I, I think about all these things. I think how wonderful it is that he's in the fourth to preach and power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. Wow, that's incredible. But if you notice the very first thing that he called them to do, their primary responsibility, look at verse number 14 again. And he ordained 12. For what purpose? Why did he ordain them? Here it is, that they should be with him. That was their primary responsibility. Not to cast out the demons, all that was a big deal. Not to preach, all that was a big deal. Their primary responsibility of those disciples was to be with Christ. That's what gave them the power to do all those other things because they were spending time with Christ. Why should we pray without ceasing? Because we need to spend time with God. That's what gives us the strength to make it through the day, to accomplish our Father's will, to fight the spiritual battle. Why do we think we can make it through and fight the spiritual wickedness on our own? Why do we think that? Oh, the disciples, they spent time with him. May I say, we must pray without ceasing because we need to spend time with God. 2 Corinthians 3.18 tells us this. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. What image? That image of the Lord. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. What is the verse saying? The verse is saying as we, as we spend time with God and we see him, we see His glory. We learn about Him. We learn how He acts. We learn how He thinks. We learn, we learn what's important. And we learn what He hates. We learn what He loves. And we, understand, we begin to understand uh, all these things about Christ. The Bible says we are changed into that same image. As we spend time with God, guess what? It starts to rub off on us a little bit. As we begin to spend time with Him, and we see how He thinks about things pretty soon, we begin thinking about things a little bit closer to His viewpoint than in our viewpoint. How many realize that sometimes our viewpoint's way off from what God's viewpoint is? 
I mean, as we spend time with Him, we're changed into that same image. Spending time with God changes us. That's why we have to pray without ceasing, because we need to spend time with God so we can be changed. Think about Exodus 34. You don't have to turn there. This is the story of Moses at Mount Sinai. He comes down, the Bible says this, It came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with two tables of testimony in his hand. And he came down from the mount that Moses wist not. He didn't know. The skin of his face shone while he talked with them. He had a glow on his face, a literal shine. When Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh unto him. You see, when he spent time with God, it actually altered him. And they say, you can't spend time with the Almighty God and then not do something for you or something to you. When you spend time with God, it changes you. Like this poem someone wrote, it says, I got up early in the morning. And rushed right into the day. I had so much to accomplish, I didn't have time to pray. Problems just tumbled about me, and heavier came each task. Why doesn't God help me? I wondered. He answered, you didn't ask. I wanted to see joy and beauty, but the day toiled on, gray and bleak. I wondered why God didn't show me, he said, but you didn't see. I tried to come into God's presence. I used all my keys at the lock. God gently and lovingly chided my child. He didn't knock. He says, I woke up early this morning and paused before entering the day. I had so much to accomplish, I had to take time to pray. Why should we pray without ceasing? We need to spend time with him. We need to strengthen his help to live like we should. Two more, we're done. Why should we pray without ceasing? God wants to hear us. We need to spend time with God. Number three, why should we pray without ceasing? Others need our prayers. Others need our prayers. I cannot fix anyone else's problem, but I know somebody who can. I can't mend someone's broken hearts. But I know somebody who can. I can't fix a, a, a terrible situation. I can't do that. But we all know somebody who can. Oh, my friends, why should we pray without ceasing? Because others need our prayers. Turn to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Almost to the end of the Old Testament. James 5 and verse 16. I want you to read a phrase uh, in that verse with me if you could. So James 5, 16. Find it there. I'll wait till you turn there. Others need our prayers. James chapter 5 and verse 16. Here's what it says. Confess your faults one to another. Can you read that next phrase with me? Here we go. Ready, begin. And pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We're commanded in this scripture to pray one for another. So that means if I let a week go by, and I'm not praying for someone else, I'm not right with God. And may I say, I could probably say, if a day goes by, and I don't have enough Christianity to pray for someone else, oh, Lord, help me. He says, confess and pray one for another. You know, it's amazing when you begin to pray how God will bring people to your mind. How many know what I'm talking about? You begin to pray for one request, and God says, hey, what about this brother over here? Remember his need? Oh, Lord, would you help him? What about this sister here? You remember her? Oh, Lord, would you help? Remember, this person needs to be saved. And God will help you with that. Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication of the Spirit and watching therein too with all perseverance. Here it is, and supplication for all saints. Someone said this, when you pray for others, God listens to you and blesses them. So when you are safe and happy, remember, someone's praying for you. Oh, that helps me. Isn't it an encouragement when, when someone sends you a text or they see you at church and say, brother, I prayed for you. Man, that helps you. That helps you so much. Hey, be that for somebody else. Be that for someone else. Maybe you say, I don't know what they need prayer for. Ask God to, ask God to prosper them. Ask God to keep them safe. You, it, 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 we don't need just to pray for, for each other when it's crisis mode. And we ought to do that for sure. But we don't have to wait till then. We can pray for one another and lift one another up. Galatians 6, 2, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. How do we bear someone else's burden? We bring it to the Lord. What about to say? Cast thy burdens upon. We help them cast those burdens on the Lord. Turn to Acts chapter 12, would you? Acts 12. I want to look at an example of praying for one another. Acts chapter number 12. I appreciate your attention now. You're doing so well. We'll be done in just a moment. Acts chapter 12. In verse number 5, Acts chapter 12, 
It's a great story about praying for others. You know, that's why we have you're turning the, that, that's why we have a prayer list. Because we have to be praying for others. And we believe that when we get together and pray for somebody else, that we believe that God hears that. And we believe that God will answer that. And that, that, that's why we print these things, and that's why we send out the text messages, because we ought to be praying for one another. Others need our prayers. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Let's read this story. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. Who was in prison? Who was in prison? Peter. But prayer was made without what? That sounds familiar. Did we read that somewhere earlier? Without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. He smote Peter on the side, raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. His chains fell off from his hands. The angel said unto him, Gird thyself, bind on thy sandals. So he did. I find that interesting. Peter was there, kicked off his sandals and relaxed, and he goes, I don't know. Get your sandals on, Peter. And so he did. He said to him, cast thy garments about thee, follow me. And he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true which was done by the angel. He thought he saw a vision. He thought he was just dreaming. He didn't realize this was actually happening. Verse 10. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. They didn't even touch it. It was not an automatic gate where they sensed that they were there. No, no, that's not what happened. It opened up because of the angel. They went out, passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. When Peter was come to himself, when he realized, this is not a dream, I'm out of jail. He said, now I know of a surety the Lord sent his angel, hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Verse 12. When he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together, doing what? Doing what? Praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. When she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness. She was so happy she knew it was him, but ran in and told out Peter. And Peter stood before the gate. They said unto her, Thou art mad. She constantly affirmed it was even so. And they said, It's his angel. Peter continued knocking. When they opened the door, they saw him, and they were astonished. What happened here? The church, without ceasing, was praying for Peter. Someone said this, the angel fetched Peter out of prison, but it was prayer that fetched the angel. Oh, may I say, when we pray for one another, God can do something. Oh, we must pray without ceasing. Why? Why? Because others need our prayers. Lastly, I'm done. We'll break out into prayer. Why should we pray without ceasing? Number one, God wants to hear us. Why should we pray without ceasing? Number two, we need to spend time with God. Number three, others need our prayers. Lastly, why should we pray without ceasing? Because the lost need the gospel. The lost need the gospel. Turn to Romans chapter 10. Would you? Romans chapter 10. Just one book over from Acts. Romans chapter 10. And verse number 1. Why should we pray without ceasing? Because the lost need the gospel. Romans 10.1. Here's what the Apostle Paul says. Brethren, my heart's desire... And prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. That word desire is satisfaction. That word means delight. It means his wish. That's what he wished for. How many of you have ever gone to a job interview? Or maybe you were at a current job and they were interviewing you for the next position up. And they ask you this question. If you had a magic wand... What would you change about this workplace? Has anyone ever been asked that question before at an interview? Oh, you did? Okay, one, okay. I remember when I was in college, I was interviewing for, I was at a position, I was at the base level, and I was interviewing for a lead position, and I was, I was in the supervisor's office, and they asked me this, that, this, that, you know. And they asked me that question, and I thought to myself, if I had a magic wand, I wouldn't have to work at this place, but that's not what I said, of course. <laughs> but I said, I don't know, I would give you a lot of money. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they said, I don't remember what I, a- 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 what I answered, but the point of the question is, if you could have whatever it is you wanted, what would you change about this place? And I think about what Paul says here. He says, my heart's desire, his wish. What Paul is saying is, if, the, if, if I could change it, if I could snap my finger and make it happen, it would be that all of Israel would be saved. That was his prayer. That was his heart's desire. Oh, may that be our heart's prayer. Would that be our heart's desire? That this area would accept the gospel. 
that Manteca, that Tracy, and Stockton, and Ripon, that they would accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. Turn to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew 9, Matthew 9. Quickly, I think this might be our last scripture. Sure is. Matthew chapter 9. In verse 36, you know it. Matthew 9, 36 through 38. Here's what it says. When he, Jesus, saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but what? The laborers are few. And as as many would say, Jesus' only prayer request, Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. To do what? To do what? To harvest that grain for the gospel. May I say, may I ask us this? Are we praying for the salvation of souls? That's what Paul was doing. He says, My heart's desire, what I wish for, what I long for, what I pray for, is that Israel would be saved. How about your neighborhood? How about your neighbors? Can they count on you to pray that they would be saved? How about this area? You know why God has put Central Valley Baptist Church right here? This is so that those around us can be saved. That's why we're here. Are we praying for that? When was the last time you as a Christian, as a member of CBBC, prayed that souls would be saved? Maybe souls in specific, maybe someone on your list, or, or maybe just this town, this city. Whose salvation am I begging God for right now? Is there anybody that on a daily basis, I mean every day, every day, every day, if Lord would just save, fill in the blank. If we don't have that in our lives, how many think we ought to? (laughs) Absolutely. And maybe you have a great list, and if you do, God bless you. And continue to pray. But I think most of us could use some help there. Sidlow Baxter said this, a preacher of yesteryear, men may spurn our appeals, may reject our message, oppose our arguments, despise our persons, but they're helpless against our prayers. (laughs) Oh, may we pray that someone would be saved. We hear these stories of back in the day of someone who was the least likely to get saved in the town, the drunk of the town. No one ever thought they'd get saved. But the town began to pray, and he came to the revival meeting. And could God still do that today? Absolutely, he could. And he wants to. But it takes us to pray that someone would get saved. What if the entire church was fervently praying for the salvation of souls? Not just pastor, not just the deacons. Not just Sunday school teachers, but all of us, every person in this room. If we were all praying every day, God would just save some souls in our town. What could and what would God do? It would be incredible. I know what he would do. He'd give us opportunities to lead others to Christ. That's what he'd do. So you're going to pray for it? Okay, here's your opportunity. And we'd lead people to Christ. We must pray without ceasing because the lost need the gospel. Why should we pray? Without ceasing, God wants to hear us. May I say, when you open your mouth in prayer, you're you're, you're not hoping that someone up there, no, 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 your God hears you tonight. When we pray, we need to spend time with God. Why, why, why Why ought we to be in that constant attitude of prayer? Because we need to be with God so God can change us. Why should we pray without ceasing? Number three, because others need our prayers. You need the prayers of others. Let's give our prayers to others in the body of Christ. Lastly, the lost need the gospel. If they're going to hear the gospel, it's going to be from someone who knows the gospel, which means us. And may God give us Paul's passion or his harsh desire, what drove him every day to his knees and out to the cities, was that Israel would be saved. Oh, may God give us that passion and fire inside of us that this area would accept the gospel. Can we stand with heads bowed and eyes closed? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word tonight. Thank you, God, for that three-word verse, pray without ceasing. God, how sometimes difficult that is, at least for me and maybe for others the same. God, we compartmentalize our prayer. God, we're here on Wednesday night and we'll pray. We're here on Sunday and we'll pray. It's mealtime and we'll pray or it's bedtime and we'll pray. But Lord, may we remember that you're there all the time. 
and God. And at any moment, we ought, we ought to be in a spirit attitude to pray right then and there. When you bring someone across our heart, or when we see something on Facebook or someone needs prayer, we get that prayer text or whatever it might be, or that we would pray and spend time with you. With head bows and eyes closed, I just want to ask one or two questions tonight. If you're here and, and you say, I remember when I prayed to the Lord and asked him to be my Savior, I know without a doubt I'm, I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. That's me. Could I see your hand? God bless you. Almost every hand in the room, maybe not every hand. Maybe you hear you say, preacher, I don't know that I'm saved. If I were to walk out of this auditorium, hop in my car and head home, and maybe I weren't to make it home due to an accident or something of that nature, I don't know for sure that I'd be in heaven. Would you pray for me? I won't embarrass you. I won't make you come up front in front of everybody. But I want to pray for you. If that's you, you say, preacher, I don't know that I'm saved. Could I just see your hand, please? No one's looking around. Could I see it anywhere across the room tonight? I don't know I'm saved, preacher. By your testimony, you're saved. How many would say, through the word of God tonight, I've been challenged in my prayer life. There are some things in my life I ought to be praying for. Maybe there's someone even that's not saved and God's bringing their face even to your mind right now. But you'd say, I've been challenged in my prayer life tonight. Could I see your hand? God bless you. The piano will play. We'll have a very brief invitation. Would you come and pray? If God's spoken to you, I don't want to waste the opportunity. Would you pray tonight? Or right in your seat, maybe. You'd kneel or sit. Who's counting on your prayers? I like what we said about Peter. Sure, the angel fetched Peter, but prayer fetched that angel. Oh, how we can help one another when we pray for them. Your God wants to hear you. Would you ask him for help? Who's that lost person that the Holy Spirit of God has been putting on your heart? He reminds you about him or about her. Maybe it's a schoolmate. Maybe it's a classmate. They're not saved. And you have a great time with them and you enjoy cutting up and eating pizza and drinking soda and playing video games, but they're not saved. Are you going to witness to them? Would you pray for them they'd get saved? Maybe it's your boss. They're not saved. Are you praying for them? If God's placed you there, that's your responsibility. You're the Christian. You're the light. You're the salt. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word. And Lord, I don't preach this message thinking that I have this all together or far from it. If anything, I, I preach this because, Lord, that's what you're convicting me about. That, that's where I need help the most. And God, I pray you help us as a church. Lord, to pray without ceasing. God, there's so much to pray for. God, others need our prayers. The lost need our prayers. God, if this area is going to get reached for Christ, God, it's because we're going to pray that you would bring more laborers to reap the harvest in this area. God, would you help us, even as we dismiss momentarily to go to prayer, God, would you help us to, to not just pray tonight, by God, but to go home and, and, and maintain that prayer today and tomorrow, the next day and the next day, that God we would pray without ceasing. What you could do with the church that grabs a hold of that truth. Oh, my Lord, I know you could do something great. And I pray that church would be CVBC. Help us, Lord, we ask. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Let's all stand, and we'll go ahead and dismiss the prayer. It's right at 8 o'clock. Here's what we're going to do. Ladies, you'll stay right here if you could. You can kind of move forward a little bit, and that way the ladies don't have to yell when they're praying. That'd be helpful. Come right to the front. Gentlemen, we're going to head to modular number three, okay, gents? Modular number three, and then we'll pray till about 8.15 or so, 8.10, 8.15, just a few minutes. And so as Brother Russell plays, let's go ahead and dismiss, and we'll head to prayer. <laughs>